everybody. You know what time it is. And today we're talking the Limp Mansion. Let's get into this. What's All up? Right. Yeah. Mm, what's up, everybody out there in horror land? What's going on, horror fam? Welcome to your favorite fucking podcast there ever was. The ever bestest was. of the best. The bestest is the Horror Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and with me as always, me two co-hosts. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, next week. that's next week. <laughs> uh, to my left, we have our very own happy as a schoolgirl, JT, for the episode tonight. What's up, everybody? Yeah. And to uh, my right, I have a very own mistress of the macabre. Yeah. <laughs> Breezy. What's up, guys? And as you guys yeah. heard in the beginning, we're talking about one of our favorite things because it's a is awesome story and b it's local to us. Local, yeah. local, local. We just blasted that. We were just listening to that way over oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> A little cold chamber. But uh, yeah, we're talking about the Le Le mansion. I am so excited about this. JT's episode. had a hard on all day. He's oh, wearing and he, I got a big old cotton boner. And he's wearing sweatpants, guys. It's, <laughs> fuck yeah. It's pretty awkward Fuck in the yeah. studios right now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see my meme I put up about you want to come over and watch a scary movie? Yeah. <laughs> exactly what we're seeing right now, guys. <laughs> Why well, yes, yes I do. But anyways, yeah, uh I know this is a pretty cool story and there's a lot to it. And JT Loves this story, yeah, and he and likes to talk. to talk. So guess what, guys? It's gonna be a great episode for him. Hey, it is no, pretty cool, though. No, it is. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Th this is a really cool story, and it's kind of near and dear to my heart because I grew up in the St. Louis area. Hello. Uh, you know, I've heard this story ever since I was a little kid. Uh, I've actually been inside this place several times. I've been there. Um, I've been all <laughs> up in there. there. All up in it. <laughs> Multiple times. And uh, got a really cool <laughs> story at the <laughs> end for you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're uh, talking about the Limp Mansion. Um, we all know that it's one of the... Hold on, JT. We hold yourself on. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm holding. Check us out. Thank you, Breezy. On face. You, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, <laughs> we always jumping into it like we usually do. We, we, are. we are. But anyways, guys, we're going to do this at the beginning from now on. I'm check excited. us out. Yeah, JT's excited, but come check us out on Facebook. If you're just listening to this podcast on, you know, iTunes or Stitcher, Spotify, wherever, come over to our Facebook page and check us out, guys. We're highly active on there, and we have a group that you can talk to us on there. Like, subscribe, and follow. Yes, and uh, we do a live show the last Saturday of every month. and Facebook Live. Facebook Live, guys. Um, so then you can actually see our little faces. And talk yeah. to us. Yeah. Ask us questions, whatever you want to talk to us about, you know. Well, if that fucking lazy ass JT would work on some videos, they could see our faces all the time. <laughs> yeah, what an asshole. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. And um, if you want to come on the show or you got a story you want to tell or something, um, send us an email. We horror, want to hear it. Yeah, horrorchroniclespodcast at gmail.com. And uh, send us your info. Let us know what you're thinking. We can take calls. We can have you call in if you'd like or if you just want us to tell your story. And um, keep it, you know hush hush who, who it's about then we'll anonymous. do that anonymous um you can also catch us where guys cranium radio cranium radio you heard that cranium you can radio. find us every friday night at 10 eastern 9 central on craniumradio.com cranium radio baby. we love you thanks for those yeah couple. cranium yes. radio has been really good to us uh got some cool stuff coming their way and yeah, they got some cool stuff coming our way. Too, yeah, it's so. a cool, it's a cool thing, and um, it's going to be work out great for everybody. It's and it's yeah, exciting. Yeah. It's going to sure. be a good partnership for sure. So yeah, guys, sorry I had to take a drink. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, me too. It's my cheat day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, that's where you can find us at. So for sure, if you're just listening to this on you know Spotify, or you wherever. Come over to our Facebook page. Check it out, guys. Come we, on uh, over to the dark side. We like we to have conversations with you guys. It'll be a fucking hoot. Start a conversation. Share some memes. We don't get offended by anything, really. So the uh, only thing we do ask is keep the political shit out of it. We don't want none of that bullshit. Yes. So, anyways, let's jump into this juicy ass fucking mm, podcast. Let's jump into this juicy ass. The <laughs> Lamp Mansion. Oh, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me scoot over. 
Can I, can I go to the other side you of the table? You shouldn't have worn them fucking no. sweatpants. No. <laughs> Easy access. <laughs> I got my underwear on backwards so you can go through the dick hole. See, there I go. Woo. Straight so through. So you can go in the dick hole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we always oh, go. Right. We always start these fucking podcasts off so great. And the yeah. limp mansion, <laughs> a bunch of, a bunch of dark. Oh, there's bunkers. nothing limp about this fucking podcast. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to come up at some family, point. The whole family is freaking limp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, so let's get into this story. Let's get uh, into this. You know, like I said, I grew up in the St. Louis area, so this story was always big around you know, my neighborhood and stuff. And a lot of people talked about it a lot because it's a very popular story. Uh, there's a lot of detail here. Um, this, uh, the, the Limp Mansion is always one of the top 10 most haunted places in the world. Oh yeah. Uh, it's been on several, several lists. Uh, it's had all kinds of paranormal investigators there, including, but not limited to, Ghost Hunters yeah, have been there. Yeah. Ghost Adventurers just recorded an episode there. Yeah. I, I don't even know that that's come out yet. Uh, I could be wrong, though. But anyway, I watched part of it on YouTube today. Heck yeah. I cheated. Cheater. Mm -hmm. I cheated. It's okay. So, so to get into the story, though, I know we're going to talk about the haunting of Limp, um, but... I kind of want to give you guys some backstory uh, about the family, about the house, about the brewing dynasty that they created. Yeah. Because um, it, it, it is a really cool but very tragic story. Oh, big time. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. about this family. So I'm going to take us way back. Way back. Way back. Way, way We're going back to the 1700s, people. Here we go. So... The history behind the Lemp family uh, really starts with Johann Adam Lemp. Uh, Johann Adam Lemp was born in 1798. He was born in Grunigen. I think I'm saying that right. Germany, yeah, right? Uh, yes, Germany. Yeah, uh, I think it is. It's yeah. He, uh, you know, <laughs> his, uh, his father passed away at a very young age. He was yep. only like 13 when his dad died. Mm -hmm. Um, his his mother remarried, and his stepfather was big into brewing. Uh, they brewed beer there in Germany, and uh, you know the they think that that's where Adam Limp you know came up with how to do this and everything. Yeah, but anyway, trade, for sure, you know, a little family history, you know, to you know get, get started. So go. Adam Adam Limp married a woman. And they had two boys, uh, Wilhelm and uh, and William Junior. Uh, Will and Will. Well, yeah. it was uh, Will, Will. It was uh, Wilhelm Junior. Jacob and then William Limp. Yes. William J. Limp. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Wilhelm ended up dying at a very young age, and. Adam Lemp kind of, you know, lost his mind. He couldn't get anything to work. He was trying to make money, and he wasn't doing very good at it in Germany. So he actually ended up leaving his wife and his son behind to kind of start a new life in, in America. So he came to the United States. <laughs> yeah. He came to the United States in 1836, there's not a lot known about where he was in 1836. There is some conjecture out there that he had went to Ohio and was in Ohio for a while. Yeah. But he ended up settling in St. Louis in 19 or sorry, in 1838. Uh, he uh, he started of all things he started a grocery store, and it was called the A Lemp and Company Family Grocery. And, the, you know, they sold all kinds of stuff, groceries, of course, yeah. you know, and different things, hardware stuff. And and one of the things that he did was he made his own vinegar and he made his own beer that he would sell out of the store. Yes. Well, a lot of the people in the area, which were German immigrants that had come from Germany, were used to his, uh, not really his, 
beer, but that that German style lager. That well, what's cool is what their brands was like one of the first light beers, like right, they not the, the dark. Right, they were the first lager beer in America. Yes. yes. And so a lot of these Germans were buying these beers and, you know, and he was making a good profit off of it. So he ended up forming what is known as the Western Brewery. Uh, the Western Brewery, he started, it was at 37 South 2nd Street. 37 South 2nd Street is not there anymore. 37 South 2nd Street is where the south leg of the arch lands now. Yeah. So, of course, you know, the building's gone and yeah. all that stuff, you know. So, uh, you know, he started brewing this beer in this brewery, and it became very popular, uh, you know, of course, because of the German population. Yep. Uh, he ended up having two sons. Like I said, he had Wilhelm, on May 24th of 1834, and he passed away December 12th of 1838. Mm. He was only four years old. Horrible. Horrible. So Wilhelm, it, it's kind of interesting, Wilhelm's name was William Wilhelm Jacob, Jacob Limp. He was named after his mother's brother, yeah. who was his godfather, and his name was Jacob. After he died, William took on the Jacob name and became William Jacob Limp. Yeah. So William Jacob Limp was born February 21st of 1836. Like I'd said, you know, Adam Limp had left them behind in Germany to seek prosperity in the United States. We'll skip ahead a few years. So William ended up coming to the United States in 1948 to be with his father. Yeah. Uh, he ended up being the foreman and at one point the manager at his father's brewery. And that's where he learned how to brew The process beer. and everything, yeah. So they became one of the biggest breweries in the area. Because of the the different beer that they yeah, had, yeah, big time. Uh, so here was a cool stat: by the 1860s, there were 40 breweries in St. Louis. Western Brewery was the most successful. They bit all doing of them. something right for Anheuser sure. Busch, yeah, all the little breweries. There was a bunch of little we call them micro breweries yeah. now, but yeah. they were all over the place. But he was selling more beer than anybody else. As time passed, William decided he wanted to get away from the family. So William J. Limp left the brewery in 1861 to partner with a different brewery. After he left, uh, He learned a lot about brewing his own beer and stuff. Uh, I kind of got my notes out of out of line here. You're all good, man. But uh, so basically, his father passed away mm -hmm. in 1862. So William went back to the Western Brewery in 1864. Under William Brewery, became the largest in St. Louis and one of the largest breweries outside of New York. Now that's big. Fuck yeah. That's big. At one point, they were the number one brewery in St. Louis, but they were the n number nine brewery in the entire country. And that was under William J. Lemp Sr.'s mm -hmm. yeah. time, time there. So, William J. Lemp Sr. Very smart guy, very good businessman, knew what he was doing, and he was kind of a genius. Oh, for sure. William, William like J. That. Lemp ended up coming up with the idea of mechanical refrigeration. Mm -hmm. In the case. To this point, the brewery sits on top of a, 
a series of caves mm-hmm. yes. underneath the city. So what they would do is they would store their beer in these caves to keep it cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the thing about these caves is when you get down into them, they roughly stay about 65 degrees oh, year-round. Yeah. They had yep. like a tunnel railroad underneath. They the did. Freaking- they did. They, they built a lot, of, a lot of stuff down there. Well, once he, once he came up with this idea of the refrigeration, yeah. things went crazy for him. Because now he can store his beer in the brewery and keep it cool. Mm-hmm. Well, that led into him creating uh, refrigeration systems for trucks, yeah. trains, all kinds of stuff. And what happened next? Now they can keep their beer cool and ship it anywhere in the country. There it is. From coast to coast. From coast to coast. coast They were shipping their their style of German lager. They were shipping it all around the country. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. They hold the record for a lot of things. And some of the things that they hold the record for, like you'll never be able to beat like the first beer company to use refrigeration oh yeah they were also the first beer company to ever put beer on an airplane yeah i read Um, that too just all kinds of cool stuff so in 1892 william decided to make a change and the william j limp brewing company was founded it changed from western brewery to limp j brewing company there or william j limp brewing company too damn long of a too yeah, damn long of a name to fucking talk about. Well, <laughs> it's like, put it on my business card. <laughs> that's that's why uh, that's why they uh, you know changed it to Limp Beer. Yep. So Limp Beer. You want to go into anything about uh about any of the beer history before I get into some of the craziness? The beer history, as far as what. As how good it is, because I can tell you, all my friends get drunk on it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, guys, they're still making it. My buddy actually just put this posted up a picture of him. He was at the beer at the brewery, bit yeah. of that, and he's like, "Can't get any fresher than this." Hey, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He was right there by it, so he's right fucking the lucky fucker. So, <laughs> so to call him out. <clears throat> that's kind of how it all started. That's how we got. The Lump Brewery, mm-hmm. as we don't know it today, <laughs> because and there's uh, there's a lot to the story. A so, lot. So, all right. So William J. Lump Sr. I already told you he was born in 1836. He married a woman named Julia Feichart. Julia Julia. <laughs> Sorry. Between the two of them, they had nine children. Woo! That's a big family. Busy. That's that's a baby factory. Yes, there. it is. Fuck yeah, you fuck know. it up. But you know, babies. Back in that time, you know, people had a lot of kids. Oh yeah, yes, they did. That was workers the take I mean, care of each other. It, it's you know. not like today. You no. know, no. we're, you know, yep, hundred percent. You needed but, the bodies to do the work. No, true. That's yeah. That's true. But but uh, so here they are. You know, William Lump Senior is running this brewery. Making millions of dollars. Oh yeah, at that time. Easily. At that time, at that time, he and his wife were the richest people in St. Louis. Yep. There was nobody that could come even close to the money they were making. People in St. Louis like beer. Oh yeah. St. Louis is a beer town. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still is. Shit, yeah, it is. Still is. You know, look at Anheuser Busch. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been there forever, and yeah. they're never going anywhere. No. <laughs> you know. And Lent probably wouldn't either if it weren't for a few. Uh, hiccups in yeah. the cog of the machine here, you know. So, like I said, William William and his wife Julia had nine children. The first one was an infant that passed away. Which was kind of the norm back Which, then, yeah. Yeah, you know, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Lot, yeah. Um, and then... You know, I'm not going to get into everybody here, but, you know, they had Anna and Lewis and Charles and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the important ones here are Frederick Limp. Well, they were all important, yeah. but <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but he uh, had a favorite song. They, they really were. But uh, Frederick Limp. Was his fame. And William Limp Jr. Yep. 
so Adam, or I'm sorry, William William Lump Sr. really wanted his brewing dynasty to be taken over by Frederick. Yep. He loved Frederick. He, it was his he favorite. thought that Frederick was going to take over the whole shebang. Well, unfortunately, in 1901, tragedy struck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Frederick had gotten ill and ended up moving to California because the doctors thought that the warm air would kind of help, help heal health, him. Yeah. Uh, he was on the mend and getting better and was thinking about coming back home when he suffered from heart failure and died. Yeah. Well, William Lemp Sr. never really recovered from that. No. So Frederick passed away in 1901, <clears throat> and... William started on this downhill decline, I mean, of depression and, you know, yeah, it, it was, like was to the point. years later. It, it, at this point, you know, we had the caverns, we had the tunnels. Um, they were using, uh, you know, they had the mansion and then they also had the brewery, which if you look at these in, in relationship to each other, they were about a block and a half away yeah. from each other. Well, they still are. Yeah. But uh, so this brewery, this brewery. To, they're to, all connected by the tunnels to underneath, tell you, too. Yes. Yeah. To tell you how, how big this is, I kind of did some math on the map and yeah. like, fi- tried to figure, figure out. Figure out where it was. Well, I, I knew where it was, but like the full I tried to figure out how big it was yeah. in, in, in scope. So like I traced it out and then did a circumference and tried to figure out square foot and, you know, acreage or whatever. And what I came up with was, because I never could find a firm figure on it, the brewery sits on 20 acres. Yeah. And it's comprised of the brewery and other houses and bottling facility yeah, and blocks. all this stuff. Yeah. The mansion itself sits on a piece of property that's roughly three acres. Yeah. It's a three-acre wedge right on, well, 55 runs right beside it now. Yeah. Um, and... Like I said, they're only about a block and a half away. Well, after Frederick's death, William had gotten into such a depression that he didn't even want to go out in public anymore. So mm-hmm. what he started doing was using a tunnel that was under the house that connected to the Cherokee Caves. Yep. And he would, he would, that's how he would get to the brewery, get back and forth. He would go through the tunnels in these caves so that he wouldn't have to interact yep. with anybody. Yep. Uh, he secluded himself from society he, straight he, up. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Um, Death of a kid could do that to you. And they sure. said mm-hmm. that they said that when he would go to work, like he would be in his office at the brewery, and he would just be sitting there at his desk, staring off yeah. into space. Oh he, yeah, he just, just he dead. pretty much gave up on everything. Yeah. He gave up on the business. He gave up on. You know, life. life. I mean, All he was just kids. depression. Depression will drag you down. Oh, oh yeah. You know, well. Then it it finally came to a head when his uh, when his best friend Frederick Pabst uh, passed away yeah. on January first of nineteen oh four. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, Pabst was part of the Pabst Brewing mm-hmm. Dynasty. It's kind of funny that two of the biggest brewers in the uh-huh. country were best friends. Uh huh. You know. So, you, I mean, I could see it because they all probably, you know, ran with the same crowd and went to the oh, same yeah. function. So oh, yeah. they were all their own up family, together. for sure. <laughs> Let's get fucked up. Woo! My beer's better than yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, and it was probably like that, too. Exactly. But, uh, so, like I said, uh, Frederick Pabst passed away on January 1st of 1904. And that just sent William senior into a spiral, a, a spiral no. out of control and on february 13th of 1904 william excused himself from the breakfast table went up to his bedroom laid down in his bed pulled out a revolver and shot himself in the head Crazy. Uh, right in the head there's a really cool ghost story that we're going to get into that has a lot to do with that. Yeah. About what happened. Nice. After that exciting. happened. Uh, but we'll get into that. Yeah. So now here is William Lemp Jr., which they called him Billy all oh, the time. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, damn Billy. it, Billy. <laughs> so 
on November 7th of 1904, <laughs> William J. Limp Jr. took over operation of the brewery and He's became big president. boy, big boss on uh, campus. He is now the king of St. Louis. Yes, he is. Five years prior to him taking over the brewery, he had married a woman named uh, Lillian Hanlon. Yes. Uh, Lillian Hanlon at the time was the richest woman in, in St. Louis. Louis. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there is a, there's a story out <laughs> <Ballin'>. there. <clears throat> there is a story out there that William Limp Jr. was. You know, he was he was a playboy. He played around. Yeah. He he liked to party and have a good time. Yeah, and, he used to you know, show his friends a good time with prostitutes and it, all this. And exactly. Big money, man. You can get away with murder. Hey, well, yeah. you got that money. He was money. he was big money. He was. Uh, so Lillian, which everybody referred to her as the Lavender Lady yep. because she dressed she always dressed in lavender. Yep. Down to the point where her horse drawn carriage was a lavender color, and yes. her white horses were dyed lavender. Yes, they were. I and that's that. how she would get around in the city, yep. was in this she lavender, lavender horse-drawn carriage. Peter yeah. have a fit. And Peter. Peter would have a fit. <laughs> so, we, weird side note here. William gave her a $1,000 a day allowance, and she had to spend it before she could come home. Uh-huh. She had to spend $1,000 a day. To get her out of Look, his hair. a thousand dollars a day is a, lot is a fucking money. shit ton of money now. Yeah. We're talking 1904. Yeah. yeah. 1904, a thousand dollars a day. You might as well give give them a hundred thousand. Yeah. A day. Yeah. To fucking blow. I mean, it's fucking impossible. Yeah. It's kind of like the movie Brewster's Millions. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Exactly. But uh, but that you know that was the story you know that he would give her this money and. Uh, you know, he wanted to shower her with gifts and stuff, but he just wanted her to spend his money. Yeah. He had this fucking fortune that Why he not? had fallen into. Yeah, you man. know, it's kind of like those uh, rich guys who are like big CEOs and stuff who like to have a uh, dominatrix pissing shit on them because seriously, they're used to telling people what to do all day long. And they like yeah. to be dominated. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they want the shock value. Yeah. So he had this big extravagant lifestyle. That, you know, him and him and uh, Lillian both. Well, we all know that they're not using the caverns anymore to cool the beer. So what did they do? They created they a party did. palace. Yeah, they Ooh. did. Big time. So what? what they did is they they cleaned out the caverns. They put in a movie theater. Yeah. A ballroom where they could dance. A pool. A swimming pool. And a bowling alley. And a bowling alley. And a slushy machine. And, of course, yeah. a bar. <laughs> you know? You can't be a brewer and not have a bar. Exactly. You know? And, basically, they would have all of society come mm -hmm. to these the caves. mansion yeah, the and, and come to these huge parties. Yeah. And but they have would do rave. nothing but drink and... and Fuck prostitutes all night. It's seriously, you know? though, oh, that's shit. Oh, yeah. I was born in the wrong era. Yeah, <laughs> there was a there was a story I ran into about uh, Lillian jumping into that pool with her dress on, uh -huh. and she almost drowned because whenever she didn't realize, whenever she I jumped mean, in, there was like a a suction of air underneath her yeah. dress, and it pulled her down. Yeah, and somebody actually had to reach in and pull her Grab out of the pool because yeah. she was going to drown. Yeah. Um, and shortly, shortly after all of this, uh, you know, her and, uh, her and William started having some major problems with his <laughs> infidelity. Yes. And, you know, he's a bad so boy. They, uh, they ended up, uh, calling it quits. Yes. They did. And, uh, yeah, that's what happens, man. You can only ride that Coke train for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, so we're getting close to the end here. Well, not really. No. But it's the end of the world. So, and we know it. You know, here we are. We're 1904. William Limp is buying all this beer, or uh, making all this beer, making all this money. Party time. Having this big extravagant lifestyle. Well, it couldn't last for very long. Mm -mm. Because just a few short years later, Prohibition hit. Bam. When Prohibition hit, they made it illegal to sell any kind of alcoholic beverage. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, that's your livelihood is alcohol. Yep. There were a few breweries that could get away with it, and Anheuser-Busch was one of them. 
because they had some non-alcoholic options. Yeah. So what Lemp tried to do is, is create a non-alcoholic drink called Serva. And it tasted like shit. <laughs> and nobody would drink it. It was not the uh, one. They couldn't sell it. They couldn't make any money. So as time goes by, William is losing money. He's finally got to decide, what am I going to do here? Mm -hmm. So he ends up, he thinks the only thing he's got to do is, I'm going to have to sell the business. Selling the business. So he ends sell up out. selling the entire brewery property <laughs> to, of all places, International Shoe Company. Yeah, the shoe company. And it's crazy, the simple fact that it was like its worth was like $7 million, yes. but he only sold it for 588500 Yeah, like it's pennies crazy. on the dollar. Yeah. Pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So... Here we are, 1920. At this point, they had created Falstaff beer, hence why I bought the box. Yep. Okay, that was a limp creation. So limp created Falstaff beer, but now that they've gotten into prohibition and they can't sell beer yep. anymore, once prohibition ended... Limp was already so far down that they couldn't recover. Yeah. So he ended up selling off his stake in Falstaff beer to a different brewing company. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I should have wrote that down. It was it was the Griesedick Brewing Company, which the Griesedicks are, uh, I think they're part of the Miller Brewing Company. Something like that, yeah. I, I, I think is how that goes. Um, I know a guy that I work with that used to, be, used to work for a, a beer vendor. And I've heard him talk about that company before. About Grease, yeah. grease Dick? About, about Grease Dick. Dick. Grease Dick. Um, that is Greasy so, Dick. <laughs> so here we are, you know, 1920. William's lost everything. Yep. He still has the, he still owns the mansion, which now he has turned into office space for the brewery. Yep. Uh, he, he doesn't have a wife. No. Nope. He's... You know, Everything's even the hookers don't want to hang shitter. out with him anymore because he ain't got no money. Shitter. You know, so oh, yeah, finally, yes. damn it, it all comes to boil. And on December 29th of 1922, William J. Limp Jr. Billy com commits suicide in his office mm -hmm. with a single shot to the chest. Do you know that that was the same place his father died 18 years ago? That's what I read. No. That's, now, that's wrong. That's his false. father died in his bedroom. You suck! Well, yeah. unless his bedroom was on the first floor. It was. And then that's possible. I think so, because it was in the... You may be right about the, that. Yeah, because whenever catch, I read it, they said it was on the left room that they called the parlor or something like right, that, where his right. office was. Well, I don't know. I, and that's interesting because... Uh, because I, I, I thought that was kind of wicked as a simple fact that he ended up dying in the same room that his dad ended up shooting himself. Oh, you know, and I forgot to talk about Elsa. Yeah. Elsa Lemp. Elsa Lemp ended up, uh, she lived in a different house. She didn't live in the mansion. Her and her husband lived in a different house. She ended up killing herself in 1920 yep. in her bedroom. Yep. But there's a big but here. There's been some research behind that, and they really don't know if she committed suicide or, or if somebody actually killed her. Mailed it. Because there is, there's a story out there about how her husband waited 25 minutes to call anybody yep. to come save her life. Yep. He claims that he was in the shower and came out of the bathroom, and she was laying on the bed with a gunshot wound to the chest. Yep. Who knows? And according to legend, he waited 25 minutes before he called for help. Crazy. Crazy. I wonder what happened. Sounds like somebody got moited. It, you know, <laughs> if, if that happened to me, I, I'd walk in the room and I'd be like, all right, hold on, honey. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I know. I you know, no, I, I would freak out, and, but I would, I would call the authorities oh, for sure. immediately. Yeah. But apparently, 
there's some uh, rumor that he actually called an attorney before before he called ah! the the hey, authorities. You gotta get your shit yeah. in order, so, man. And that's what he was trying to do was get his shit together. That's right. Oh man, that's so, man, that, that's my dog. <laughs> that's so my and it was dog. funny because at this point William Lemp Jr. is still alive. It's yeah. 1920. Uh, when he heard the news, his response was. Well, that's the limps for you. Yeah. Yes, a lot of suicide. Like, like oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You know, hey, and you I'll know, fuck her. You know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. Well, you know, but, a lot of that stuff runs in families, too, though. There's Especially not, when there's wealth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, a part yeah. of it. Straight up, money. Greedy motherfuckers. Yeah. Oh, Seriously. Yeah. So who knows? So now we'll get into the last one, and that's Charles Limp. Yep. Now, Charles... I didn't go in depth with him because there's really no need to. Uh, Charles took over the mansion after William passed away. Yep. And Charles lived there until 1949. In 1949, weird story, he called the local funeral home and said that if I die, I don't want to be embalmed. I don't want you to wash my body. Or do anything with my clothing. I just want want to be cremated immediately. Why? Weird, weird. Why? So Will, uh, so Charles Limp ended up in 1949 inside the house. So William and his father both killed themselves in the same room. Yeah. The room right across the hall. Charles went in the room with his dog. He shot and killed his dog and then killed himself. Now, the weird thing about this is, so now look at that, folks. That's four suicides yep. in one family yep. in just a few years. Charles is the only one that left a note, and his note said, in case I am found dead, blame it on no one but me. Well, how we know the dog didn't kill him first, and then he, maybe he the dog did. shot himself? Maybe, maybe the dog, you know, <laughs> went thug life, you know. I can't live with Who this knows? fucker. Uh, so, you know, it's... Suicide is never the answer. It, it, it's not. There are... Things can always get better. I mean, I understand that people go through tough times, and think that killing yourself is the only route. It's not the only route. There are people out there you can talk to. Oh, yeah. for sure. I mean, you should never... I don't know how much I, you know, I can say about that. It just... Suicide is not the answer. No. Get help, you know? Yeah, don't be afraid to talk to somebody. Now, it's kind of strange because in this case, why were all these people... Killing themselves. This all started with William Lemp Sr. Killing himself over yeah. depression. Well, that was in this posh mansion that they lived in. Yeah. Is there something going on in this mansion that is forcing these people to Kill take them. their own lives? It's an Indian burial ground underneath uh, and they fucked with it. Well, dun, dun, there's, there dun. is a theory behind that. There, there is a theory behind that, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit. So, here was kind of a cool thing. That What did I do with my sticky notes that I just had? So, notes. now we're going to get into the actual mansion itself, and we're going to jump ahead in time here. Yes. So, Edwin is the only one that's left alive, and... At this point, Edwin does not want anything to do with the brewing company, the mansion, nothing. He just doesn't want anything to do with it. So whenever, whenever uh, Charles commits suicide, Edwin actually has possession of the house now. Edwin doesn't want to be there. He has his own life, he, you know, far away from all of this chaos. Hell yeah, smart man. Mm -hmm. So Edwin lived to the ripe old age of 90. He go. died in 1970. In 1970, he, he wrote up a decree with his lawyer that on, uh, whenever he died, 
He wanted all of his artwork and anything that had to do with the family to be burnt. Really? And what they did is they destroyed all the artwork. Now, the limps, they were very rich. Oh, they yeah, had they a had lot a of lot. paintings, a lot of artwork. They had what, like four, four little safes? There were, there were four vaults in the yeah. back of the building or in the back of the mansion yeah. that were full of artwork, high dollar artwork. Yeah. Edwin had it all destroyed. Wow. He did not want what he called the darkness of the Lent family to tarnish anybody else. Damn. Yeah, it, man. Very strange. Very strange. Um, the, whole, the whole family is just very tragic story. It, it well, really is. Well, you know, and the, kind of going into a little bit of like a, I don't know, a, a paranormal meets science aspect that we've been talking about recently. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very possible. I know that my family deals with it. Uh, manic depression runs in people's families, you know, and um, you would put money on top of that. You put all the responsibility of this and that and uh, you know, it's like a shit storm. A shit storm. It's like a shit storm just waiting to be fucking released. And then again, Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe this being on top of, maybe this lands. Well, the ground sour. All right. If you want, <laughs> if you want to get into that, we're going to get into that. Let's fucking get into. So it. Well, what? What did I tell well, you? The well, name well, of the cave was. What? What did I tell you? The name of the cave was. What was it? Cherokee. Cherokee. Yeah. What is Cherokee? Indian. Indians. It's a yeah. jeep. This whole complex... It's a jeep. <laughs> this whole complex was built over old tribal Cherokee land. Yeah. Come on now. There's a rumor that that has something to do with what's going on in the house today. See, I could believe that. Mm -hmm. With the deaths of all the limps. They're all... Yeah, they're all connected. I mean, the yeah. same way of ending their lives or suicide or... Yeah. So, you've had four limps die. Yep. Only one of them didn't die in their own house. Yeah. He got out. She got out. <laughs> she, got out. Yeah, she got out. She got out. There was a there was a really strange story that I was watching a documentary on, and this lady was a historian, and she was talking about when William Limp was going through his depression. William yeah. Limp Jr. is what we're talking, or senior. I'm sorry. Yeah. Was going through his depression with Frederick passing his son Frederick yeah. passing away, his and then his son. best friend Frederick. Yeah. Between Frederick passing away and his his best friend passing away, there was a story about William Limp Jr. going into his office and catching his father having a conversation with somebody who wasn't there. Crazy. And he would tell them, he, he would tell him that it was Frederick, his son, that he was talking to. What? A very strange that's story. That's awesome. But, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, there was a little bit of history there, and then they they think that may have been why he was never able to get over it. That's crazy. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, if you constantly, you know, have, whether it be real or whether it be in your head, you have your dead child talking to you all the fucking time. <sighs> like, that drive anybody insane. I mean, you're going to go fucking nuts. Yeah, you know? and everybody yeah. around you thinks you're a freaking nut job. Yeah, so it just adds so, on to the depression. Yeah. Um, did you guys hear any stories with whenever they changed it into a, the boarding house at all? Any stories? Get into it, girl. No, I, I just, I, I read about it, but well, I didn't, I, I, I do didn't know look that into it. I just didn't know if you guys knew anything with the boarding house. Once, once Charles, uh, passed away, yeah. uh, the house went into disrepair and at one time it was a boarding house. Yeah. But that's really all I know that's about all, that. Yeah. There was there was some. I, I I vaguely remember some stories about some deaths there, but not yeah. nothing that was you know that captured that stood out yeah. to me. Uh, so now you know we've been talking about this, and I'm sorry, guys. You know it's taken us 45 minutes to get this far, and we haven't even started really talking about the hauntings here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, JT. But, well, <laughs> you kind of you kind of have, have to, to know the, the backstory. History. You got to know the backstory to to know what's going on now. Yeah, I mean because it, it really plays a lot with it. Uh, if you know what yeah. happened, it makes seeing what's happening now uh -huh. more understandable. Yeah. So 
we're going we're gonna to talk about the house, but real quick, I thought this was cool. I ran across this today. CNN, the news network, CNN. Yeah. Clinton News Network. I mean, hey, no, hey, sorry, hey, sorry. Hey, <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, political hey, now. Sorry. We're getting politics now. Sorry, guys. Uh, you're fired. Fuck. CNN yeah, has, yeah, you're has called die. the Lent Mansion the spookiest place in the world. Oh, for sure. And also, USA Today says that it is in the in their top ten list of most haunted places. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that cool tell you? Two respectable news yeah. organizations. And what does that tell you? It's or, really fucking you know, haunted. About this stuff. It's a haunted motherfucker. So, so after after all the limps, you know, are gone, uh, you get the hard family, <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> fucking hard. <laughs> well, that's funny considering the name of the family that took the place over. Is that the greasy dicks? <laughs> They're the point. <laughs> They're called the pointers. <laughs> the pointer family. In 1975, Dick Pointer Dick and his pointer. family bought the property. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Jesus. Now this story makes complete sense. Damn it, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, all right. If you guys want to know a little bit of stuff here, the mansion uh, its address is 3322 Demental Lane or Demental Place. Uh, it is very easy to find. You can see it from I-55. Yep. Uh, headed north or south, uh, going into downtown St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was built by Jacob Fecart, who God. was William Senior's wife's father. So William Senior's father-in-law. Yeah. He built this house in 1868, and William Sr. ended up buying the house in 1826. And then after he bought the house, he remodeled it and used part of the part of the home for offices. Yeah, for the for, brewery. For the brewery. Yeah. Now, we're talking a big home. It's this huge. house has 33 rooms. 33 rooms. It's huge. It, it's That's crazy. Way too damn much. This place. <laughs> have you guys ever been there? No, no, but I no. want to. No uh, we need to make a trip up there. Yes, we do. Uh, so close. This place is absolutely gorgeous. I heard When Marvel. the Pointer family took it over, yeah. they completely, uh, I don't want to say remodel. What's the, what's the Restore. word? Restore. Restore. Restored, yeah. They, they restored the whole house to the time period of the limps. Nice. So when you walk Prestige. in there, it's just nice. like uh, whenever the limps vintage. lived there. Vintage, yeah. The only thing that's different is so cool. the limps so cool. had taken out the grand staircase and put in an elevator. Yeah, they did? Well, now it's gone. They've taken the elevator out and they've put the staircase back in, but it is different. Huh. Um, but when you walk in the front door, when you walk in the front door of the place, you're looking down a hallway and there's a huge grand staircase along the right-hand wall that goes up and then turns to the second floor. Now, this building is three stories tall. Yes. Uh, thirty-three rooms. It's pretty damn big. And a basement. The whole, okay. the whole okay. property, the whole property has got. Uh, now it's got like all kinds of different outbuildings and stuff. Like they have like a grand hall in the back that's got like a bar and yep. it's like a you know where they have these big huge parties yeah. and people can dance where and they stuff. Can socialize and stuff. Um, there's a big gazebo out there. There's a garden. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a really beautiful area. And what's cool about it is it's still when the pointers took it over, they turned it into a bed and breakfast and, and a, a restaurant. restaurant. Uh, this place is still a bed and breakfast. You can stay there now, and yeah. it's not that expensive. It is one hundred and fifty dollars a night during the week, and two hundred a night on the weekends. Did but it? the the size of the rooms is insane, oh. and I know this because I've spent the night there. That's awesome. Um, and it's kind of crazy. I didn't realize until I was doing the research on this place. Yeah, I stayed in the William Lump Senior suite. Ha! That's awesome. It's pretty that's cool. Awesome. Fuck yeah. It's pretty that's cool. Fucking awesome. Um, we try to fucking book that shit. So it, yeah. it's very easy. Uh, most of the time, their bookings are about two months out. Uh, they still have a restaurant. They serve five star cuisine. Yep. Their food is excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It's Sweet. expensive. Yeah. But their food is really good. They do a fantastic dinner theater. Like murder mystery yeah, dinner theater. Yeah, why not? And man, it is so fun. So fun. <laughs> oh, we got to try that shit. Uh, yeah, we do. Oh, shit. I ended up 
so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this little story. So I ended up staying there. It was it was me and a couple of my buddies, and the one the one guy had a girlfriend, and then she brought one of her friends. So we got the one room. Or G. Well, we got the one room. Or G. And it was it was two guys or two girls one and three guys. <laughs> now, let me tell you though, this one room was about the size of this garage. Holy shit. It yeah. was it was a double room. So it had the bedroom off to the side and then like a sitting parlor out. You got to think though, the air that it was built. I mean, usually yes. the rooms yeah. were like that. Yeah, it was huge. Now not all the rooms were the, or that no. big. Yeah, but this room each, it was a double room. Each story so, is completely different. So you, you had, had the, the bed off and... to the left and then the sitting parlor off to the right when you walked in the door. Uh it was in that setting parlor. There was a couch on each wall, you know. And these, this room was probably, I don't know, twenty foot across. Holy shit! You know, yeah. I mean, it was probably a almost as size. big as yeah. this. I mean, it was yeah. pretty good size. Uh, so, this is kind of a fucked up story, but here's, here's the orgy part I was telling you. About. No, 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 not at all. Poles came down from the ceiling. So. <laughs> Well, I, I knew the one guy's girlfriend really well. I mean, you know, we were in a band. The, the three guys, all three of us guys were in the same band. Yeah. And uh, Jason was a drummer. Mikey was our singer. And I was, you know, the bass player. And uh, there was a girl with with uh, with Jason. And, and then she had her friend there. And her friend was just, you know, she was a friend of the band and yeah. stuff. You know, she wasn't. She wasn't, groupie? A, she wasn't a groupie or nothing. <laughs> she wasn't a groupie or nothing like that. She wasn't throwing pussy at everybody. You know? She, just, <laughs> she just wanted you know, to hang. She'd just come and hang out and have oh, a good yeah. time because we all like to party. Yeah. So, anyway, Orgy. middle of the night, <laughs> Jason and his girlfriend get done fucking in this other room. Holla. And, Holla. Uh, I told you. And uh, so, anyway, here I am. I'm, I'm laying on this couch and I can't sleep. Get your hands out of there. And, uh, you know, the... The sheets moving and stuff. Anyway, Always. Uh, so uh, the, ghost. <laughs> the, the the one girl, the friend, is is sitting in there, and we're just kind of talking, you know, just bullshitting and shit. And Jason's girlfriend comes out of the room, and uh, she's like, "What are you guys doing?" And I'm like, "Oh, we're just hanging out." I said, "But I kind of want to go out and explore a little bit. Yeah. You know, let's see if we can go out." Mm-hmm. And and see, you know, I want to see the house. I, it, at that point, I had only been in there once. Yeah. And I wanted to see it, you know. So so anyway, here it is. It's like fucking 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, the Limp Mansion, it only has, I think, four rooms that you can rent. Okay. For the, for the evening. Yeah. So they don't have very many rooms. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we go out, and we're kind of walking around. And at this point, you know, it's late at night. All the All the guests should be asleep except to us, yeah. you know, and, uh, there's not, not any quiet. workers really around or anything. Yeah. Cause it's not like a regular hotel, no. you know, everybody's it's a bed and breakfast. Yeah. So anyway, we go out and we wander around, we walk down and we look in the dining room and stuff and we're just checking the place out. Cause it's fucking cool as shit. This place is gorgeous. Yeah. So it's really cool. So you got the grand staircase that goes up in the front. Well, if you go past that grand staircase into the back, there's like a servant staircase that kind of spiral. It's not a spiral staircase, but it kind of spirals up a shaft that goes up to, up the, to the second, second floor. and third yeah. floor. Yeah. So we're out w- looking around and stuff, and they had told us we could we could go anywhere in the house, but don't go up on the third floor. There's nothing up there. Well, where the fuck did I go? The third floor. I went to the third floor. Yeah, you did. So I get up there. So when you get up to the top of the staircase... There's a another room that you can rent, and I, I believe that room is called the Elsa room. Uh, you can rent that room for the night, and that room was finished, but they were like, it was under construction. Well, when you're in the third floor, you're kind of like in the attic of the house. Yeah, that's right? exactly what it is. So this is where it gets fucked up. So when you get up to the top of the staircase, there's not a lot of room up there. I mean, it's kind of like a landing up there. Yeah. There was a door immediately to my right that went into the Elsa room. And then just to the left of that door was another door with a big fucking sign on it that said, do not enter, danger. (laughs) Okay, okay, whatever, you know. The door's supposed to be locked. What was hanging about halfway open? (laughs) 
So what did I do? I fucking pushed it open. And it was that fucking typical fucking haunted house, creaky ass door. <laughs> and I looked through, and it's like you could see about five foot in, into the room, and then it was complete darkness. There's no lights in there. Absolutely <laughs> dark. Well, back then I was a big smoker. Yeah. Um, so I pull out my fucking cigarette lighter. Here we are. We're wandering through the fucking attic of the fucking Lent Mansion. Me and these two girls with nothing but a fucking cigarette lighter. <laughs> Talk about fucking creepy. Uh huh. So anyway, we're in this area. Pants come down. Yay! And you're, you're walking through there, and it was like an unfinished part of the house. And, like, you could see the trusses uh -huh. for the ceiling or for the roof of the building. So you're, you know you're in the attic. Yeah. You know it had the slanted trusses and stuff. And there was like a path that went through the center of them. So as we're walking through, there was like all kinds of crap and shit off to the side, you know, just random shit. Yeah. So as we're walking through, I look over to the left and I see, you know, those really, really old time fucking baby carriages. Yeah. That's like a bassinet. Like off the, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like Rosemary's yes. Baby. Yes. Rosemary Rosemary's baby. baby. Those old time baby carriages. Yeah. There is one sitting off to the side of this path. Did you go look in there? Did well, you, I would have. I, you know, I kind of, I kind of glanced in there, but I, there was still a long ways to go to get yeah. to the end of the building, and I wanted to see what the fuck was down there. Yeah. You know. So these two girls are fucking clutched onto me, like, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, get the Don't fuck breathe. off of me, so I can see Don't what breathe. the fuck's up here. You yeah. Know? And uh, so anyway, I walk all the way down as far as I can, and I come to an area where, like, it, I don't know, it was weird. It kind of opened up a little bit, and then I could see the, the slats, you know, going the other yeah. direction up against the outside wall. And there was a little tiny window about, I don't know, about yay big, but it was only about that tall, and it was right on the floor. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's kind of fucking weird, but whatever. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, like my house. we kind of looked around and, you know, and didn't really see anything. So we come walking back out and we, we, we walk back down this path and we get about halfway through. Oh, there's the baby carriage. Okay. We walk around the baby carriage and then walk out and head towards the door. We can see the light. Yeah. And as we get to the door, it fucking dawned on me. We just walked around yeah. that baby carriage. Ah, I fucking I shit moved. you not. I shit you not. That baby carriage was off to the side yeah. when we walked through there. But when we came back out, we had to walk around it to get ah. out of the fucking building. Fucking shit you <laughs> not. I never saw the thing move. Because, no. of course, we're up there in total darkness. Yeah. But it fucking moved. <laughs> That's awesome. Very fucking creepy. That's awesome. Very fucking creepy. <laughs> I wish I was so, there. That was my time in the Lent Mansion. Sweet. I, uh, you know, oh, yeah. and it, it was fucking cool. So there are all kinds of stories out there from different people that, yeah. you know, talk about, you know, seeing different things. And, like, everybody, like, the people that run the place now, they claim that they experience something every day. Oh, yeah. Ghostly knocks uh, and fan, uh, phantom footsteps and just... Stuff like that throughout the whole yeah, house. Yeah, the feeling of being watched yes. all, the time, all the time. That's just the hidden cameras in your rooms. <laughs> it, you know, pop, They're really watching. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I stayed there, though, it was like mid nineties. Oh yeah, dude. No, know. it's a. Uh, yeah. it, it we was, we should definitely. Fuck yeah. Oh, it's gonna so, be a must. So now it's I think happen. that area that we were in, I think now they have they've opened it up. They they have like restored all that and, yeah and it actually has rooms in it now and the reason why i think that is i was watching a thing from channel 2 news about they had went to the Lent mansion and all of they end up they're they're upstairs on that third floor and they walk into walk through a door and i'm like wait that's the door I've hold been on there. hold on and as they open that door it opens up to another bedroom and they go into this bedroom and uh it was John Pertzborn that was that was in there, and yeah. he was talking with a girl that worked there, and she was telling him some weird stories and stuff. So anyway, he was talking about she was talking about this door is you know past this door is where it's really creepy and whatever you know, and uh, so he was like, well, hey, let's wa let's look through the door, you yeah. know. So anyway, he opens the door, and there's that little fucking window. 
And I'm like, oh, fuck. I've been there. I've fucking yeah, been there. That's What's awesome. That? There's, there's that paranormal group uh, up there. Uh, paranormal Task Force. Um, are they the ones that – there's a group I follow. There are a few of them, actually. I can't remember which one it is that actually does, like, an, investiga an investigation at the Lent Brewery and stuff all the fucking time. Well – All the time. Here, right. here is a new thing that they just started doing. They have a thing now called the Limp Experience. Is it a live feed? No. They should do that. No, it's fucking better. Uh-oh. It's better. So what they do now is, and, it, and it's not that expensive. It's 35 bucks a person. Yeah. You go in. They have, it, I, think they, I think it said they give you one drink and, like, you get appetizers and stuff. And then they take you on a tour of the house. But what they do is they go a little farther. They give everybody their own infrared camera. Dude. So you can so investigate you can have yourself. The experience. Yep. We're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to check yeah. it out for sure. We're and they said it. if you want to stay the night, you can stay the night and they'll give you a discount on the room. Hell we're yeah, we're staying the night for sure. We're doing <laughs> it. But yeah, dude, it's going to be awesome. But yeah, I can't uh, wait. They, they do that pretty much Throughout year round, yeah. but it, they said it's really. The times change quite a bit, like between October and November, on when they season, do it. Yeah. I think right now they only do it on Thursday nights. Okay. But you know, I, I could be. I I looked Some on their website, look and what sure. their website was was showing you 2019. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, so yeah, guys, if you were looking for a cool spot to stay that you know is going to have be on it, the fucking Lint Mansion is something to check out for sure. Sounds like I got great food. Sound like they got oh, badass. Yeah, food's fucking Sound like they got badass, badass, badass hauntings. Dude, they Something got they everything out. I love. They do, they do a do fucking it. killer fucking Halloween party too. I've seen some pictures from that. Do you guys know why they they ended up um, closing off the tunnels? Did you guys read anything about that? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think either. they just don't want people down in there. Well, now, now, uh, the uh, same people that own the Darkness Haunted House mm -hmm. do the haunting at Limp, yeah. and they own part of the brewery now. So they do a haunted house inside the brewery. Uh, and their haunted too. house takes you, basically what they do is, so you wait in line, and you're waiting at a, at a door, yeah. and they open the door, it's a fucking cargo elevator. <laughs> and they shove everybody, as many people as they can get in this cargo elevator, and then it takes you three stories under the ground. Dude. And then the haunted house is actually down in the caverns. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. This is going to be fucking badass. Uh, <laughs> oh, for sure. But yeah, I hear the, like I said, I hear they do a really cool Halloween party. Uh, it's just a fucking, it's just all around a cool place. So if you're with cool that place. much history, I mean, it's going to be a good time. And if you're in the area, guys, and you're looking for a cool spot to stay that's kind of haunted and has cool history, Lint Mansion is where it's at. Just call ahead of time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to make a reservation. But yeah, uh, that's awesome. I want to just tell this one story about this lady that worked at the at the mansion. There, there's a few stories here, but the one I, I'm not going to read it because I because yeah. I know the story. But uh, you know, I might look and see what the lady's name. Okay, so her name was Bonnie Stray Strayhorn, and she was one of the people that worked at the mansion. She worked down in the dining room and stuff. Yeah. And anyway, she goes into work one morning and she's getting everything ready and she's going through the house and, and checking stuff out. Well, yeah, she walks into the dining thing. room and in the dining room, there's a man sitting in a chair at a table okay. and he's got his back to her. Yeah. So she was like, oh, somebody must have came in early or yeah, something, you know. Anything of it. So she said to him, you know, she's like, oh, good morning, sir. How are you? And he never said anything to her. And she said, can I get you a cup of coffee? And he never spoke to her. And, and the whole time she's walking towards him. Well, she gets almost to him. And she's like, you know, there's something about this guy just doesn't look right. Yeah. And about that time, there was this loud bang behind her. And she whipped around to see what was going on behind her. And when she turned back around a split second later, the guy was gone. Gone. Oh, gone. Yeah. yeah. She, she ended up quitting her job. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I found my special place. I know. I'd be like, dude, I'm retiring here. Whenever they this were doing the great. renovations, several of the construction workers... Just didn't want anything. Just to do walked with out it. on yeah. the job. I mean, left their tools there and everything. Just no, we're not going back in there. Oh yeah, you know? it's gonna be awesome. It's one of those places. Yeah, fuck yeah, you it's know? gonna be fucking sweet, dude. So, I cannot wait. I, I really want to take you guys. There. Oh, we're yeah. going to other sure. It is fucking yeah. cool. There's man. something we're yeah. gonna have to line out. Cool. There's no need. I mean, like, 
why would we not? I mean, it's yeah. just what. Yeah, an and hour. it's totally open to the public. It, yeah. Even if you're not gonna eat dinner or stay the night, you can still go in there and look around. Yeah. Oh, it's They've got a little museum and stuff that's got a lot of the information that we just told you. Yeah. You know. Dude, but, totally up our alley. Yeah, it's it's fucking cool, man. Fucking yeah. cool. The Limp Mansion. That's the where it's at, guys. Mansion. That is where it's at. No, that's an awesome story. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with it. And if you guys want a cool place to check out, check it out. Go do some research yourself, too. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stories you guys could check out. Um, it's definitely worth uh, worth reading some It's worth this. whatever you pay to get in there. I mean, it's, you know, by all means, go there and, you know, be respectful. I mean, the place is gorgeous. These people have done a fantastic job about keeping this place looking the way it looked whenever, yeah. you know, you went in or, you know, whenever the limps were in prominence, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, that's, and that's something you know. that we try to preach whenever we talk about uh, going and investigating areas. If you guys are really into it, most of the people who are into it already know this, but if you're just now getting into it, guys, be respectful where you're going. Yeah, yeah. no matter um, where you go, always get permission. Yeah, it, it just makes it, A, A it makes it, better for you and better for your experience and whatever you're doing but it also makes it better for everyone else because people are more likely to let others in if you guys are you know cur not being a dick shit, yeah you know? so uh yeah anybody got anything else they want to talk about anyone no well, all in I, fair I, warn I, I i pretty much shut up talked no. all i could talk <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we got to tell you guys that there is way more to the story Lots. than we oh, yeah. even told you about. I, we, you know, we just kind of scratched the surface with the family and tried to give you yeah. a little bit of the history and why things are going on there. Pick the scab a little you bit. You know, yeah. and there's so much there's yes. so much going on there that there are paranormal investigators from all over the country that go here. I mean, yeah. like I said, the ghost hunters, ghost adventurers. Troy Taylor has done numerous events here. Yeah, um, haunted. Just, uh, just a cool place. And all these people are experiencing some strange things. You know, lights flickering, oh, candles lighting themselves. Oh, there's a story about there's a grand piano there and sometimes in the middle of the night you'll hear it play a couple notes yeah. just out of the blue yeah it kind of yeah. reminds me of the stanley hotel in a way yeah yeah except a on a bit. much smaller scale oh yes yes you know. but yeah. just the but yeah i you know i love the lunt mansion i am so glad that you guys were willing to do this Absolutely. episode yeah. i've been wanting to do this happy. for a long time it's i mean good, it's, it's it's a good one it's been a fascination of mine since i was young you know and Oh uh, yeah, it just, dude. it's a it, and it's it's local. It's some cool shit. It's and, and it's history just, behind it. It's proven, it. yeah, it's yeah. yeah. proven history. Yeah. So yeah. there you definitely, go, guys. Definitely check it out for sure. Um, and I'm sure we'll you'll be hearing more in the future. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. we're, we're gonna, gonna be we're gonna go and we're, all that fun shit. We'll be doing a bunch of stuff. So oh yeah, it's gonna be awesome, for sure. guys. For sure. All right, guys. Uh, that's gonna be it for our lamp. Egg, you know. I'm happy for you, JT. Yeah, JT, <laughs> you did good. That was like I didn't one. even you have did to do good. a cartwheel either. I'm, yeah, you did great, you man. Did pretty, good, I'm man. Glad, pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome, man. But yeah, that's a great episode and um, awesome history. And you guys can look more into it. There's plenty of cool shit we didn't mention. Um, go check out the books, the YouTube pages, the yeah. freaking fa oh, there's all the kinds. Of stuff. Troy Taylor's got a great book everything. called Haunted St. Louis, and he goes pretty in depth with the Lent Mansion. He he goes in depth with a lot of a lot of hauntings on St. Louis, but he gets pretty in depth with yeah. the Lent Mansion and the Terrible family and stuff. Up in the bottom, uh, all up in there. Yeah. You know, there are several books out there about the Lent Mansion. Um, all right, all right. Support your local authors. Support, support the local. local. Support yes. your local podcast. That's like the Horror Chronicles podcast. The Horror Chronicles. Tell your friends. Invite your family. Be our friend. <laughs> Please be our friend. Come play with us. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. In this one, uh, you know how it is. We love you. You know what to do. Until next time, keep, keep it creepy. creepy.